Uh, this is Bill Hartzer, and this is the Digital Marketing Podcast with Bill Hartzer uh, for February 4th, 2021. And I have the uh, unique pleasure of having Jabez Robrett here um, with me this afternoon. We're talking about digital PR um, and, you know, and, and, and the digital marketing industry in particular. Uh, and I'm going to get a little bit, you know, talk a little bit about uh, Getting media, getting media attention, and kind of the and and not only just get media attention, but maybe even writing and getting some content doing, you know, content and the difference between content for uh, as a journalist piece and and being a journalist or versus um, you know just writing content for for your readers on uh, so let's say a company blog. So welcome. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and your your background, how you got in the industry, and 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 all that. Well, Bill, it's great to see you. Thank you for having me. Um, I believe we met at PubCon years and years ago. Uh, yeah, at least so well over 10 years, probably. Yeah. So I uh, used to own an agency. Um, we primarily focused in the legal space. So we did um, everything from uh, creating websites, content, SEO, paid advertising, uh, PPC, mm -hmm. the whole bit. Um, sold that agency a few years ago to open up a boarding school for underserved youth. Um, and I moved into the education technology space uh, here recently, um, and then also been a journalist. So I've been sure. wrote, wrote for NBC for a long time, uh, for years and years, and then uh, now I write for Forbes uh, primarily and um, love talking about media. We all want it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so a little bit, um, you know, tell me a little bit about the difference, I guess, between writing as a journalist and writing, you know, content just for as a blogger or writing, you know, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, maybe a small business might have a, it's interesting because I've get questions from small businesses that say, well, hey, I've got my website, I've got all my services out there. Do I really need a blog? And what are, you know, what are, what are the benefits of that? Yeah, it, it, there's a lot of ways to write. Um, I think that a journalistic approach involves uh, curating an article that is pr primarily informational based to mm -hmm. help inform and add value to the reader. Um, sure. What that means is generally you don't use first person language. I, I this, I that, me. Um, you avoid comments like we. Um, you might get external people to give a comment to the piece. So, if, you know, if you pick your topic and then you do a little research or you know someone who knows about that topic, you may reach yep. out and for comment and say, hey, could you add something? Like, here's a question I'm trying to answer. And that can be via email or phone or, or whatever. Sure. Um, you know, and then when you craft the piece, you'd be thinking about it less in an opinion piece and more of a content piece, like just sharing mm -hmm. the facts. There's nothing but the facts, ma'am. Because yep. you do some of this, like you, you, you've helped with clients on, on organizing in, in your own content as well, too. Sure. I mean, how so would you my describe? content, you know, in particular, I mean, I, I've just, I, years ago, I decided to have my own blog and, and make it a little bit more journalistic, um, and, you know, and get some traffic by actually doing some research and, you know, doing kind of some investigative reporting, if you will, to try and uncover some things here and there that, you know, that will, uh, that people are interested in and whether it, you know, whether it has to do with you know, domain names that have been stolen or, you know, weird things going on with website traffic or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, that, that certainly is, you know, kind of related to, the industry that I that I'm in. So uh, in that way, I've, you know, gotten a lot of uh, traffic and, and, and so forth and, and just natural links. As we talk about, you know, digital PR, you know, and and kind of doing that uh, and writing, you know, writing content journalistically uh, about your industry and or you know, uncovering something, doing a research report or, re you know, research, research study or a case study or, you know, doing some kind of research in your industry and report, you know, and using wherever you're publishing it, what, you know, publishing it on your blog and then potentially pitching it also or separately pitching it to um, a publication um, in your industry. So there's a lot of different options uh, versus just writing a blog and, and talking about 
you know, winners coming in, you know, how to, um, you know, add, insul add, add uh, more insulation um, to your house. Uh, and, and that would be appropriate for a home inspector or some kind of, you know, home services type of um, industry. Um, you have that evergreen content, but this, we're actually in the case, but more journalistic where, you know, it, it's a lot different. Yeah, and, and it, it kind of changes and elevates the content. It, in a sense, makes it almost more shareable in the moment. Sure, um, and it, and I, I, don't, I don't think it's an either or, like you don't ever produce evergreen content. That's yep. no, no, nobody's saying that. We're saying create more journalistic content because you're probably not creating enough of that. You're probably creating plenty of the evergreen content, yep. thinking about where are the moments to say, um, you know, can I do a little bit of research on something? Is there something changing? And, and sometimes you forget what might be common to you isn't commonplace to everyone else. And so if, if it's common knowledge and I learn something neat and interesting, maybe everybody else doesn't know it because they're not steeped in that every day in and day out. Um, you know, maybe there's a new type of insulation that's coming out on the market. And maybe you yep. write a post about that insulation and how it's different. And maybe you sure. interview somebody who's used it, or you interview a contractor, or you interview somebody else. There's so many angles for that. You know, like if you're a home inspector and maybe you interview a real estate agent, maybe you interview a, get a comment from a, 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 a contractor, right? And those are two now referral sources for you. So yeah. now you're building relationships too. So yep. there's a lot of layers to this that are beyond just simply producing a written piece of content. Sure, definitely. And so there's kind of a couple of different options. There's a couple, you know, there's certainly you can reach out to your, you know, industry magazine and or industry, you know, publication um, and say, hey, we'd like to write, a, you know, our, our, C-level executive or our CEO would like to write an article about such and such topic, um, and you know you pitch to them, um, and you know and and you work with them to get the you know to get that content produced. Um, you can do it directly on a essentially an article or on a blog on your site. Um, and I guess the third option, which I've seen successfully done, is which is a more of a long-term play which is you know, completely separately, you buy a domain name and, and put up a separate mm. you know, news website for your industry. And then you know, that in theory, that, you know, that particular website would have, you know, it's a news website. And uh, ideally we're talking about you know, enough content that, and enough journalistic type of content that it would be accepted you know, into Google News and, and so forth. And then obviously it would, could provide free ad space for or free ads to the you know to the company that that owns it um yeah i've seen one you know successful um uh, implementation of that and whereas you know the news website has been going on for years and their competitive the competitors submit their press releases to it um they don't really know that it's a necessarily owned by you know or was owned by a competitor, um, but still, I mean, it's legitimate and it's, you know, it's the way, uh, it's another option. And, and people out there are dying to contribute content. So, sure. you know, it doesn't mean if you start a news publication of your own uh, or, or type of industry type of thing that, that you're gonna have to be writing all the content by any stretch. Um, you know, there's plenty of companies out there that are willing to give up content uh, in exchange for the, you know, having that out on the internet, um, which is great. So that, you know, lightens the load a little bit on a project like that. Yep. And, and I always tell people, don't be afraid to try to write for actual media outlets yourself. I'm a terrible writer. I mean, I'm, I'm not like, I, I'm, I, as I mentioned before, I can write a good story, but like I can tell a good story, the actual grammar and spelling not my strong suit. I don't have a degree in journalism. I, you don't need a degree in journalism to do this. Um, you know, you have to understand how to write like a journalist, like you were talking about earlier. You have to understand um, how to approach media outlets. I always recommend people start with their local ABC, NBC affiliate, sure. wherever you live and go say, hey, this is my trade. This is what I do. These are the people that I know. Uh, that I would like to interview. These are the topics I would like to cover. And this is why your audience would care. 
right? This is why the readers will want this content because the media outlet wants content that readers will share and click just like we do. And so it, it creates an opportunity there for you to begin to maybe kind of take your writing into another, another space that you may not have explored before. Yeah, keep in mind, you know, the, 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 that type of content really is more factual based and not necessarily promotional based. And, you know, it's, 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 uh, there's, you can be more successful as a writer, if you will, uh, where you don't necessarily mention your company and you don't in the, in the piece itself. And so I've had, I've had situations where I have a client said, Hey, we wrote this great article and, you know, but it tends to read more promotional. And it, that's one of the things that we just have to get past is that, you know, we, we don't necessarily, we can't really necessarily in journalistic pieces, we can't necessarily promote our, you know, promote our, our, ourself or promote our company or anything like that. It needs to be more factual based and more, you know, news type of content where you will get, essentially you get, you know, you will get in a bio or you get a, you know, a link or a mention, you know, um, um, that way versus actually just thinking about, okay, well, I'm going to write a piece and just insert that. Um, and that's, insert, insert a link essentially. Um, so that goes, you know, for whether it's a local, publication or even a you know even a national but when we think when I think local I think that that's where it's great to start because I know so many small businesses have been mentioned in locally on you know a local affiliate and that actually within a day or two all of a sudden becomes a national story um, Absolutely. or there can be you know or or there can be you know products that um, that suddenly become, you know, by, because of the internet and because of, you know, because of, uh, you know, viral, whatever, um, let's, let, let's look at an example with the Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders mittens. <laughs> Somebody actually made those mittens, um, a local business and in Vermont. And so, and he mentioned somewhere the name of the business or the person who, wrote those or created them and so there's some kind of special you know uh, special mitten and and i'm sure just overnight literally um that all of a sudden you know those are very popular and so it is possible uh to be a small business that's probably this is an extreme example um and but it really just some here someone who has a small business who who hand you know hand, hand makes um, uh, mittens and sells them, and all of a sudden now there's such a probably a worldwide demand for those for those mittens for the mittens because uh, you know Bernie Sanders award them in a, you know in a piece that is uh, now viral. So uh, yes, which is definitely, awesome. You know, so you know that's not necessarily journalistic, but it but I have seen other you know other examples of that. I've seen even our in our own industry. Uh, there is a fellow who does, who, who helps, um, businesses get rid of negative review, you know, negative reviews on Google. Mm. And that started as a local story in an NBC affiliate, um, out of Los Absolutely. Angeles and was picked up and, and two or three days later, he was literally on the today show on NBC, um, in, in NBC studios talking about awesome. Um, reviews so it is possible uh, and so and that, don't you know, leave that, it to so, accident right to what yes. you're to what you're talking about there don't 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 just hope it's going to happen take some proactive <laughs> steps to put yourself in a position to make that a reality yes you know and, and I, I certainly think about keep like, in mind that there are people in organizations that are better at better writers better at being you know, that, that interview yeah. better than others. Um, and so, you know, most, most organizations, you know, some people don't want to be on camera, um, but there are some people who are, you know, different, uh, different employees at companies that do better being interviewed. Um, and some that are really great writers that 
Um, they may do one job. They may be, uh, they may just answer the phones, but they're a great writer. So they're, you know, so in your own, own your own organization, it's, it's great to be able to find, you know, those type of people with those skills. Yeah. And, and leverage those skills, you know, and help them, um, you know, co-author pieces. If you've got somebody who's a Perfect. really strong writer, you're not quite as strong, but you're the CEO or the face of it. And so it's okay to co-author and give a byline to your employee. Done that many times, especially with industry publications. Um, that's, that's really useful. Um, you know, and I think about like, I've been covered on the media a ton because I am a journalist. And that, sure. you know, I end up in rooms where I'm talking to other journalists. I'm in, you know, meetings, I'm in, you know, online communities and Facebook groups and at conferences. And so just in getting to know more media people, you will find yourself in more media opportunities, um, you know, and so that there's a lot to be had, plus even just the people you interview. So, you know, if you want to write about your industry and then you just go interview all of your prospects. For if you write for NBC yep. Dallas, <laughs> NBC Atlanta, NBC wherever, they all have, there's an affiliate everywhere, NBC, NBC San Diego, and you're, you know, a plumber um, or an agency owner or whatever it is, just go interview all the people that you want to have as your clients. Then yep. they're giving you the content. They're, the interview is the content. You don't even need to come up with the idea. You just interview them, take what they said, put it into an article publish the article, and now you've built a relationship with that person. You now have a connection or you were, were able to get in that door where before you you probably wouldn't have been able to get in. And I remember seven years ago, eight years ago, eight years ago, I think it was, no, well, maybe longer. Um, I was at South by Southwest and Tony Shea was there in the audience, hanging out. His number two was given yep. a presentation on the panel. Nobody was talking to Tony. I don't even think half the people even knew who he was. Um, I walked up and I was like, hey, your, his book had just come out. I was like, love your book. Love what you're doing at Zappos. Super awesome. I write for NBC. Would you be open to an interview? And he was like, sure. He's like, but you have to come to Vegas and meet me there where he lives. And I'll, I'll do sure. the interview there in person. I said, okay, cool. So Tony put me up in a place. He, I flew down, spent the whole day with him. Like yep. it, it was incredible. Like it was such a fun experience that I was like, not if I hadn't been a journalist, I would have never even been able to approach that conversation. Sure, definitely. So other, another point that I'd like to actually mention is the is internet time. Uh, that, mm. you know, there's, when I think about internet, you know, everything happens very quickly. Someone tweets something and within minutes, within, let's say within half an hour, it can be trending on Twitter. And, and so whether, whatever industry it's in. So one of the benefits um, of thinking about internet time is being able to be in a position where you can create that, con create content very quickly or react or post quickly. So one of the things that I like to say that I'm pretty good at um, is if there is something that comes up that is a potential story that I want to write about or is a topic, I know that the first person to really publish about that or um, if you can get something out there quickly as a journalist, um, then you're going to have a lot, it's going to do better than necessarily waiting a day and then, re and then covering it. Um, and there, so if you're, a, you know, if you are able to kind of take that uh, breaking news, if you will, and to cover that fairly quickly and get that out there, um, you, you know, years ago, back in, let's say um, early 2000s, um, before 2010, it was, that was something I was doing a lot of, and I could get stories and, and articles and blog posts indexed a lot quicker. Now, obviously, uh, you know, Google will index things within seconds. So we are, um, it's, a, it's a little bit more difficult um, to deal with, but 
if it's a, let's say you're in a B2B industry and you, you tend to have most of your posts go to you be written and go into an editor and then go to somebody else to write it. And then it's scheduled as a post and it takes a week or two or two or three, sometimes even two, I've seen two or three weeks to get a blog post approved internally, then you're pr probably not going to be in a position <laughs> to take advantage of, you know, more of the breaking news of your industry. Um, and so that, you know, that happens, uh, that's, you know, you can definitely, you know, so you should be able to have that option um, and be in a position where I take the, you know, where the, the approach is essentially that you write it, you get it, you publish it. And then as you have more information about the subject, you go back and you add, you, you add more content to that post. Uh, it's where you see updated, you know, right? So you just see yes, like, you yes, can get the piece yes, out sure. immediately. And then exactly. you can say updated February, you know, whatever at this time. So like, you, you can just add more to it. So get the 400, 500 words of it out yep. immediately. And then go in and add the rest of the, the meat to it. You know, if, if more stuff comes out or get some more comments, um, you know, yeah, and, and interesting. Get the mo more social shares, you know, and, and so forth. And people like to be, you know, the first one to share something that they heard about. And so then, you know, so if you're and going to reach out and to sharing it, and then you, you'll get the majority of the social shares. And, and, and reach out to somebody who has a ton of followers, who gets a ton of traction and ask them yep. for a comment and then send them the article. I guarantee they'll send it out because yes, they doesn't love to see themselves in, in print, yep. um, you know, and, and so that's a fantastic strategy, um, you know, if, particularly if you're a strong writer, um, you know, definitely something worth carving out some time for and being flexible with. I love it. Sure. So we're just about out of time um, for this half hour. So why don't you um, give me uh, some details about how to get in touch with you and um, some of the services that you provide? Uh, but how, how can we connect with you? That was super fast. Um, so LinkedIn is great. I, I love connecting with folks on LinkedIn. Yep. So it's just Jabez Labret, J-A-B-E-Z. Uh, probably only Jabez um, that you will be listening to this week on podcasts. Sure. Um, and then, you know, I, I, if anybody wants, I, I have an email that I send to friends who say, I want to write for a journalist uh, publication, like an NBC or Forbes. Yep. Um, I'm happy to send that email out to folks. So connect me on LinkedIn and say, Hey, I heard you on Bill's show. I want to, could you send me the information about how to write for publications? And I'll just forward it on to you and say, Hey, here's the strategy. Here, here's how to approach and who to approach. Um, in order to make that happen. That sounds great. So connect on LinkedIn, Jabez Labrette. Um, thank you for sh thank you for sharing um, all this uh, time. And I know your time is valuable. So thanks again for sharing um, this half hour with me and um, we'll be in touch. We'll see you online. Thank you for having me. Okay, thanks.